Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Electric Converted Humvee. This week I was really hoping we'd get very far, almost all the way done, but we didn't. We uh, hit a lot of challenges. So if you like a good train wreck, stay tuned. So I thought I'd start out still trying to tackle the charging problem. So I found a couple of issues that I thought may help us. I think I may have found, I'll say one error. We have a direct connection with the AC load and the ground. So I got a new AC DC converter. There's no direct connection there. So I think the other one went bad. So we'll swap this one out and see if we get any better results. checking on the bench before I put it in the car. And I'm just trying to make sure that with my setup, we're getting 12 volts. Looks like we're getting 12 volts, no snap, crackle, pop. I'll leave it for a little bit longer, make sure nothing's heating up. This is an inline fuse holder. These are mostly meant for 12 volt applications. So these fuses I think are only rated up to about uh, 32 volts, similar here. So where we're doing high voltage applications, we actually have to use something different. So this is the fuse holder I'm using. Um, you can see here, we're actually gonna be more like five amps, but you can see for DC, um, we're well under where we need to be. These mount with, I always call this a DIN rail, like so. Uh, the fuse goes in here. Picked up some fuses. Here you'll see again, what's up to 500 volts. We're only going to do four amps because that's roughly what our DC to DC converter will take. All right, Zach, we're going into 30 and 31. So we'll have to update your schematic. So basically all I did is I replaced the AC to DC converter. The new fuse holder, I got that, uh, so it's fastened down. Got the fuse in there. I've wired things from the contactor to the fuse and then out to this plug. Um, the plug is wired, and again, I've got another wire going from the plug to the negative contactor. So I think battery box stuff is done. I need to wire the other side of this plug. Ah. All right, so I've got some uh, wraparound sheathing. I got the orange to go around high voltage cables. Kind of looks like this on the end, but you can open it and uh, put your bundle of wires in. You can actually kind of slide it so they all go in and then it closes back up. The thing that's nice about this is you can kind of open it anywhere along um, the length and get access to any wire, add any wire, things like that. All right, I got the uh, orange sheathing on the high voltage line. All right, I've done several wiring changes. Um, I think I've got everything put back together. I just reconnected the 12 volt battery. Um, I'm just going to make sure that everything still seems to work. You're coming along just to see if anything exciting happens. So it seems like our DC to DC converter is still working. We have done a few other wiring changes. We got a new AC to DC converter and we connected the ground um, from the charging port to the ground of the vehicle. So we're gonna see if that now fixes our charging problem or if it continues. I'm gonna give it a 50-50 chance. You again. Hmm. We will get the best of you. Her gear. Just in time as my other charger was uh, dead. They've offered to let me review this one. So let's see what we've got here. So it is plugged in. The car is charging. Now that's how you're supposed to charge. Now if only you can charge. All right, so this is kind of pretty cool display here. So this shows your voltage. Uh, so again, the house voltage as well as the current. So this is currently charging around 11 amps. So we are in 40 amp mode. 
but my onboard car charger will only charge around 11 amps. So you got the power, about 2.6 kilowatts, total energy, 0.08 kilowatt hours. It's also got the temperature of the box. So again, a really cool unit, I like it. So to use the Wi-Fi, it looks like we have to connect to the Wi-Fi that this unit is putting out. And then we'll visit this and it'll be a quasi app. Okay guys, here's the secret password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's funny. That's the same password I use in my bank. So this tells us our voltage, energy, charging state, charging time, power, all the good stuff. So when it's unconnected, we have the opportunity to change the setting here, as well as the time delay or time charging and begin time. So you can have a delay or start now. History energy. So that'll allow you to know how much you've charged uh, just through your history. So that's pretty cool. So on here, it's just got the two buttons, A and the clock. So A is changing your amps. So there's 32, 40, can go all the way down to 10, 16. So the clock is how long you want to charge it. So up here it says one, two, well, all the way up to 10. Some very nice thick cable. Cable is UL rated, but also very easy to bend. So again, really cool unit, um, a compact, small. It comes with a wall hanger as well as a charge port hanger. I do have to say, I think one of my favorite things is the cap. Keeps things nice and clean. I don't know why they all don't do that. So again, this is from Pergear. You can pick yours up today. I've got a link in the description for US, for Canada, and just for their general site. There's some really good coupons, uh, $60 off or $30 off. So go check those out. All right, so way the heck over there, that's the new charger. We're gonna try charging. So again, we've done a lot of work. We've uh, connected a ground that wasn't connected before. We've switched out the AC-DC converter, um, double checked some pins and things. We've even loaded a new profile onto the battery management system. So my confidence is raised all the way up to about 60%. I think there's a 60% chance that this will work. I don't think it worked. So I'll take you over here. This is green. So green, blue is like when it's not char or not hooked up to anything. The green when it was kind of flashing means it's charging. So green just means it's connected. So it recognizes that it's connected. I've been back and forth with some of the best and brightest minds in the community and we are stumped. So it's gonna take a little bit longer on the charging side. Even with this new charger, we were not able to get things to charge. So I thought I'll shift gears and tackle some of the other things we still need to get to. Right there at the bottom, that is uh, the brake switch. So I've got this bracket. I'm gonna go ahead and mount it so that when I step on the brake, the brake switch um, works for us. Good. All right, we're looking at this uh, breaker right here, which is kind of a cool idea, but um, right now it's for 140 amps and uh, the wiring we have, so we just have uh, kind of some two gauge wire. Um, that's really only good for like up to about 70 amps. The 140 amp breaker um, would never trip, meaning the wires would burn up before that happened. So we're gonna go ahead and swap that out with a 50 amp breaker. All right, we're gonna make a twisted pair. Let's get two wires, clamp them down. So put the other ends in your chuck. Looks pretty good. I have been busy in the footwell here. I added a serial port here 
This one is for the BMS. Um, I also added one here. This is for a CAN interface. I also added a USB cable and that goes to the back of the display. So you can plug in to change the settings there. So in the first Humvee episode, we talked a lot about this. Um, there are a lot of systems. They're not all communicating with each other. First, we have the vehicle control unit or VCU and it's Communication is mainly with the motor. Um, it also controls things like pre-charge circuit. So it is happily communicating with the motor, meaning um, we can shift it into drive, forward, reverse, and when we push on the accelerator pedal, it moves the car. So that's happy. All right, we're switching gears for a second. I'm diving deep into the controller and figuring out uh, if we can get the controller to talk to the display. Because right now, it's not displaying any um, engine speed, torque, RPM. So just going through some troubleshooting steps, learning way more than I thought I ever wanted to know about this. So this is what CAN looks like. So these are the messages, and each of one of these means something to something. I know, very specific, right? So basically it'll communicate like this. Some will be letters, others will be numbers. And basically um, these are flowing very quickly from the various units. Um, so the BMS will throw up something like this and really what it means is like battery cell 4 is at 4 degrees Celsius. And so all these different uh, elements are throwing around these codes very quickly. The motor will say, hey, we're at uh, this percent regen. The vehicle control unit will say, hey, throttle position is at this. So again, there's tons of these messages that are flying all around and they are all being um, either ignored or looked at by the various units. What we found out is the motor is trying to use some of the same units um, as the VCU for the display. We have to create a new file to tell the motor, hey, display a different value, and we have to then have a different file on the display that knows how to read that new, that new number and display it properly. So that's what we're gonna get into. So I'll turn the car on so you can kind of see the live feed, how quickly things go by. And you can see how many of those go by. That's how fast everything is getting communicated. So with a few changes to the controller, we are now able to get um, kind of some temperatures here for the controller as well as the motor. We also have uh, our kilowatt hours, state of charge, voltage. So I think we have everything reading. We need to rev up the motor to uh, see if we've got everything else displaying. Um, as far as power output, uh, regen, things like that. But we have an issue. This is my ability to whisper to the electric car. Um, I'm noticing that there is a little bit of weirdness going on. Uh, I think we got a problem. Let me show you what it is. So 51 degrees, that is the pre-charge resistor. And um, what I'm gonna show you is what I'm finding. So when I turn on the car, um, I hear the DC to DC converter kind of um, almost going like a wave, like a like kind of surging. So I don't know if you can hear it, but it's like woo, 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 woo. So when you come over here, so we're at 71, 85. So the pre-charge resistor is heating up. So in theory, when the car is on, it shouldn't be seeing any voltage going through it. So I think what it means is that that contactor potentially has given out or is not quite working properly. We're gonna do a little investigation, make sure that this is working. So when we made the change, the change was a CAN address in the controller. And that actually messed up the vehicle control unit so that the pre-charge relay doesn't work. And then we're having some issues there. All right, so we got it connected. <clears throat> we're not gonna flash. All right, flashing is complete. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn this on, see what the screen does. So we've got most of the things here. We're missing the controller temperature and motor temperature. Um, I think I'll go, I think we're in neutral, so I'll go ahead and uh, 
give a little bit of the accelerator and see if that does anything. So don't have that either, it doesn't look like. So I just uploaded my latest attempt. So this is pretty good. We've got the battery temp here, which is showing, the controller temp, which is showing, the motor temp, which is showing, um, state of charge, and the voltage. Uh, the kilowatt hours, yeah, we're not, we didn't quite pick the right parameter there. And now the test is to see if we've got any of the RPMs or miles per hour working, which has been the most challenging. So let's give this a go. So we've got, got things moving here, but nothing there. So still a little ways to go and I'm at the point where I need a little more assistance. So I've got uh, call into Andromeda, but uh, they can't get back with me for a while. So, so we'll have to pause on that one as well. All right, we are under the Humvee again and we are switching some of the wiring. So this is what it looks like. There's a large wire bundle here that's going back to the rest of the car. That's an option that may work for us. Ow! All right, um, I found a section of the CAN cable that was not twisted. So it happened to be the section going to the charger. Um, in my experience, everybody tells you like, hey, it's gotta be twisted. I just haven't found it to kind of cause critical issues, but maybe this is how everybody learns that it's gotta be twisted. So we're gonna try it one more time, see if it works. Yeah, nothing. Not done there either. It has been a while and I have put in a ton of work. So I did wanna get a video out, let you guys know what's been going on. We're not quite there, but we're getting close. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.